Alright, technically, technically I am about a minute early, but with the delay, well, <laughs> it'll probably start uh, by the time like it's actually 10.30, but good morning everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and let's dye some yarn. I am so, so excited to dye some yarn inspired by this beautiful, beautiful graffiti scene. Um, I believe that this is from the Love Wall in New York City. Um, a photographer named Renee Fisher took the picture that I'm using today. Um, but the um, artist Gold Crown, and now I'm blanking on his first name, I do have a link to his gallery page in the video description. Um, and so J Gold Crown, and is it going to tell me some more? <laughs> Bio. I was like, of all the things I forgot to pull up, um, James. Okay, that's what I thought. James Goldcrown is the artist in spot who created um, these levels. They are all over the place. Um, and yes, I, I'm just really excited to play with color. So the colors that we're going to create are going to involve a lot of layering, uh, which is very similar to the technique that we did last time. But this time, instead of layering shades of like just blue, with maybe some pops of contrasting color, we're going to be layering all kinds of colors together and hopefully have some fun. So I hope that this photo, this photo is really inspiring to all of you. Um, good morning. I don't know why that is held. Um, okay, I'm going to make the image smaller. So I pulled some, I, what, I pulled six colors that I saw in the photo, but if you want to participate in the dialogue, you're obviously not limited to those colors I pulled. There are so many different hues in here. Now, one main difference between, say, paint and dye is that paint is opaque. So you can layer paint on top of one another, and what you see is the most recent color you added on. But dyes work differently. Dyes are more additive. They are they're transparent. So whenever you over dye something, there's always some amount of what was there before that sort of shines through a little bit. So for example, these white hearts, those pops of white, hopefully we can uh, keep some pops of white in our colorway, but you know, we'll see, maybe we'll go, we'll do a few, we'll do like sets inspired by this, but uh, you can't unfortunately add white on top. So having that crisp, pop of color after isn't going to quite work. So I just sort of wanted to throw that out there just at the beginning. Now, what is the Chemnitz Dialogue? Each month I choose an inspiration photo and create some colorways inspired by it. And I, since it's a dialogue, I invite all of you to participate at home. Now today I will be using acid dyes on Knit Pick Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. This yarn is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. But you can pick any yarn you want, any dye type you want, any technique you want. The goal of this is to show how many different kinds of colorways people can create, uh, all inspired by one photo. And of course, you're more than welcome to copy what I do. I invite all of you to recreate the things I do. This is why I share recipes and detailed protocols of all of my colorways. But the most fun of this is that in about a month, I will share a recap from this live stream so you can see the finished colorways I created today. And along with that, I try to feature some of your photos of the yarn that you created. And so the way to get, there are two ways to get featured. One is to share the yarn that you dyed inspired by this photo using the hashtag Chemnitz Dye Along on Instagram. Or you can find this photo on the Chemnitz Facebook page and all my social media is linked in the description. And you can reply with a photo comment. And then I'll pick some of those to include in the recap, which is a lot of fun. Um, I just ask that the colorways you include do be ones that you dyed recently inspired by the photo um, versus um, you're more than welcome. And I'd love to see uh, colorways that fit the photo well that you dyed in the past. But I'm going to try to pick ones that uh, that you, know, you dyed inspired by the photo. You can do fiber. You can spin and blend. There's many ways that you can be involved. Um, one exception was last month someone shared some yarn that um, was dyed with blueberries, and I was like, okay, I have to include that because, yeah. Um, so, oh, 
Is anyone getting a ringing tone from the video? Let me keep, let me listen. Yeah, I hear it too. I don't know. Where? So, well, right now my refrigerator is going, but I don't think that's going to I don't know. I don't know what it's from. And of course, there's like a delay, so I'm trying to adjust things and see if it helps. Um, I'm trying to tell, and I'll pull that back up in a second. I'm trying to tell if it's the mic itself um, or something with the software. So we will see. But I just reduced the input volume. But I have noticed this in the past. I need to upgrade my mic. I don't know if that helps. Um, shoot. I'm very sorry, everyone. Um, very sorry about that. Uh, and of course, my voice, <laughs> my voice is hoarse because I'm very, very allergic to all the tree pollen. Uh, and so I have seasonally, yes, very, very severe allergies this year. Um, DJ Chadwick, thank you so, so much for the super chat. Um, it's the little, uh, if you see the dollar sign at the bottom of the screen, it's like a chip jar. And so thank you so, so much. Um, hello, terrible influence. Thank you for your new great video. I have a friend say, oh, yay, for more Kool-Aid. Um, awesome. Okay, I'm glad that it's not that terrible. Um, oh, okay. I'm, okay, thank you guys. <laughs> I'm trying to make better. All right, I think I'm just going to get started. I think I share as much as, oh. Uh, some other things. So I also include some links to some of the items that I use in the video description. So this includes, for example, uh, I'm using Nitpicks Yarn today. I am a Nitpicks affiliate, so I do earn commission from sales of items to the links. So I have Nitpicks Bear Yarn and Dyer Supplier Bear Yarn um, linked down there. I try to mark all affiliate links really clearly so you guys know. I also have a blog post where I list all my favorite dedicated dye tools and equipment. All of that is linked below, and make sure you subscribe. So, um, I am excited. Oh, awesome. Strange, because I'm in the matrix. Okay, the audio is better now. So, we are going to be dyeing Stroll, which is our 75-25 Superwash Merino Nylon, mainly because my, uh, <laughs> I, my fingering uh, stock <laughs> of dyed yarn is getting very low, and so... That's why I have chosen that space today, and because I have a lot of it. But um, as I keep playing with the inspiration photo, so yeah, I think first I'm going to get started off in one of my favorite ways to start off these live streams. We will be doing some color swatching on a skein of yarn to get a sense of how I might want to modify the colors that we're going to layer, and then I'm going to get into dyeing the colorway that I popped into my head as soon as I saw this photo. And then, well, I have a lot of near empties, and so we might leave a lot of, or we might leave a lot of dye behind. We might do a lot of leave no dye behind at the end, depending on how much time we've got. So that is my plan for the day. Um, actually, I'm going to leave the image up because, oh, dude, <laughs> too many cameras. Uh, I pulled a lot of dye stocks. Um, but I also have um, four new, I mean, they're not really stocks, but I didn't weigh the amount of dye. Um, I think I pulled Tree Turquoise, uh, Fire Engine Red. These are all Dharma colors. They are not well mixed yet. Uh, Peacock Blue, which, yep, I remember that that one's a bit of a pain. And then uh, Teal, I think, were the colors that I picked. I'm going to get some more hot water. Uh, but outside of that, some other colors I pulled is, I think, a brownish gray that I mixed from cherry blossom. There's a green from cherry blossom. I've got some silver gray, which is the one uh, stock that's at a 2% stock solution. Um, this is back from a massive yarn dyeing video. I've got a deep magenta that had a hint of blue in it. I've got some jacquard golden yellow. 
I also have some fluorescent lemon and Aztec gold. Um, I've got a lot of colors around, and I think my plan is to see where we are and then modify from that. Okay, that's nice and warm. So, in theory, I would make more dye stock with some of these colors, but the problem that I'm having is that um, I am out of space for dye stock, which is one of the reasons why we do need to do some leave no dye behind today, because uh, I need to, I have a bunch of nearly empty things, and I thought that like a graffiti inspiration would be fairly perfect for that. Um, and I wanted some different blues. And yeah, I think we're going to start off with just like a pop of color on. Um, I'm not even going to finish diluting these. We're just going to look at them on some yarn and then dye that color away and then decide what I want to use. So I want to hide that. I don't even have any acid in here yet. We are just going to do this even more crudely than normal. But sometimes I like to check colors on paper towels. Other times I like to check directly onto yarn. And I want to make sure I can see the chat. Um, sour apple is one of my favorite colors. Um, Um, so Melanie, Nick Crate sent an email with the coupon code that you can use at Dyer Supplier. I can't say it here because it's supposed to be for like Nick Crate members. I also have not received my Nick Crate boxes yet, which is why I haven't opened it. I think I'm getting a couple and one should arrive on Tuesday, hopefully. Okay, so this is our true turquoise and we will see how intense that definitely needs to be diluted because that is looking very, very peacock to me. Um, and for reference, whoa, yeah, but the peacock is not, well, blue is kind of a pain, so it's not really in solution. I think that's why I like sapphire blue more than peacock. Um, this is the teal, yeah, that is deep, and then we've got our... Fire Engine Red, which actually this this um, dilution is pretty good. Fire Engine Red is a bit of an orangey red, um, but it's still very, very pretty. Okay, so this is our 1% of golden yellow, which I think I'm going to want to dilute. Yeah, I'm probably going to want to dilute that, which is good because you can see I don't have a ton of it. This is my pink mixture which I'm also going to want to dilute. That's a bit intense. Okay, so that's good. But the hues of those are good. And let's check this random green. Okay, that is not very concentrated, but I could use the green. Um, I probably would use it if I wanted to ship one of the other colors. Uh, let's check. Oh, that gray is actually good. I might just use this as the gray, even though I don't know what's in it. And, oh, but I do want to check. Here's my 2% stock of silver gray. Huh. Which actually is not bad as it is. I was thinking I might want to dilute it, but being that concentrated is actually pretty good, which is um, always fun. The reason why in that video that I filmed ages ago, it was ages and ages ago, um, the, the reason why I did a 2% of gray is that I wanted to show that the 1% stock solution of black is more concentrated than the 2% stock solution of gray. Um, so that the the uh, concentration of your stock solution can make a difference on the, um, the color intensity, but some colors are more pigmented. So that's why I just did it that way. 
Uh, all right, let's add some water, and we're going to just have some fun very randomly on this one. But I'm going to dilute that turquoise and peel. I'm just adding some more water to those jars, and we'll add some water in here. So this is, what, two cups, and it's technically warm water. So I'm just curious what's going to happen because there's no acid in here yet. So I was feeling curious about what would happen from just pouring water on top and seeing what kind of spread we might get. Okay. Um, yeah, it's just kind of fun to sometimes. Okay, so I said that I wanted to, and this is just our quick little swatch friend. Um, I'm going to dilute the yellow. And this is all very, I, I'm dying by feel, and I feel like um, that's a fun way to do this project today. Okay, that is most of this yellow color. Let's see how it is. Eventually, like, I, as soon as I saw this, I had an idea, but okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, for our yellow, and I said I wanted to dilute our pink. Doing this over at my sink. Just taking a tiny bit. And I'm using some old tie dye bottles. Uh, so that way we can just use these little squeeze bottles to apply our dye today. And that is much, much better as the pink, it is more pink, less. Uh, deep magenta. <laughs> um, okay, let's do some of, this is my teal color, which I might want to add some blue to it. Okay, yeah, that is quite intense. I think let's just add, so we've only added a tiny bit to here. Let's just fill the rest of this with water. Because uh -oh. sometimes what you need to do is change the hue by mixing in another color. And I am not doing well at turning on the faucet. Okay. So sometimes you need to add another color to adjust the hue. But sometimes what you really just need is. Oh, that's good. Sometimes you just need it to be less intense and that can take care of whatever it is that you are dealing with. And now, what happens if I take more peacock blue? I have a feeling it's gonna get more intense um, because it's not dissolving well, is, and that's what I think I remembered about, yeah. Okay, so when we tested it before, there wasn't a ton of color, and then now, like, it is, more intense, but that's actually, I think, around where we want it. Maybe we want it a little more intense, but, or sorry, not more intense. Maybe we want it a little less intense. And again, there's no acid in here. I'm just using this to put my palette together. But I actually really like this as as it is, as a, like a little canvas right now. Um, feels very like artful. Um, the red I want to leave as is, and then the true turquoise. Off, normally, I might have been inclined to use frozen. Ooh, we're seeing some of those specks. 
Um, normally I might have been inclined to use some Frozen for this color. This is still very intense. I think I'm going to dilute it. Uh, but I am nearly out of Frozen. Um, it is one of my favorite colors and it is technically way less pigmented than say True Turquoise or Caribbean Blue, which I think ultimately might have some similar hues to them. And so the difference is going to be like subtle, but I'm really liking this and I actually think it fits the inspiration a bit. I probably will want to add a little bit of color to the other side, but it's feeling very like artsy to me. Um, I still have to add vinegar though and heat, so let's not forget that. My last bottle, I'm adding some of our red. Because I want to test my add more water in. It's very orangey. Um, but it's a good, it's a good red. So okay, what I'm gonna do now. Mm, no, I think I'm gonna leave that one fairly concentrated. What I'm gonna do now is add some acid. And I'm removing my gloves and I'm going to try, these colors are definitely going to spread because, well, there is no acid in here yet, um, but I, yeah, we'll, we'll change that right now and then start heating it up and then we'll flip the side whether or not we want more color on the other side and then we'll get ready for the version of this love wall that I have in my head, but I don't know I can achieve. So I think I've got around six cups of water in here. And whenever we put in, the acid will be left over for the next project as well. So, and I've lost count. I think that's maybe like four to five tablespoons of white vinegar. So my tap water does run slightly acidic. So when I dye yarn, sometimes I start to see some things strike on the faster side. But oh, this is really exciting me. And I lost my phone. I really want to take a picture. Um, I am going to be posting uh, pictures to my Instagram stories. I'm just at Chemnitz on Instagram. Sometimes the colors on the webcam don't come through the, the best and most true way. So that's why I try to um, try to upload some photos during these live streams. But I'm going to come here and check out your questions. And so if I do miss questions while I'm uh, at the die counter or something like that, please ask again uh, when you see my face, because that's when you know I'm definitely checking the chat. Um, hello, everybody. Um, I definitely thought about doing a sock line for this. I think I'm not Cool. Uh, I, we'll see like where time brings us, right? Um, I, I definitely thought about doing a soft line for this. I think with a soft line, I would probably want boredom. And I mean, I could do something. There was a soft line I did once with just dry dye powder where I had it scrunched up in the pan and I dyed part. And then as the dye struck, I kept moving it further and further down. That would kind of work, but I think that, yeah, I mean, I, I have a blink in the other room, so I might pull one out depending on where we end up. Um, huh, I haven't tried a potato stamp or anything like that on yarn. It could work pretty well. I've tried some stamps and stencils in the past. I definitely recommend either using like a spray that will give a really light layer of color so it doesn't then spread too much or using the guar gum. So that way, again, the color doesn't spread too much when it comes to stamping. But I have a whole live stream where I tried I think I made like a sponge heart. Like I tried a bunch of different like stamps and stencils just to see how it would work. Um, so yes, this is stroll fingering yarn today. Uh, I'm waiting for some more dyer supplier yarn to come, but I do have that link in the video description. 
So they have been a really big month for me. <laughs> so I'm featured in a knit crate this month. Um, and because you know they had their mill shut down due to the pandemic, and so they couldn't get the colorway that they had planned, and so they reached out to me and we put together a Kool-Aid project that they're sending to everyone who is a knit crate member. And with some dyer supply of berry yarn, and I think it's a lot of fun. And I have made a bunch of Kool-Aid videos this month on my channel, but I also made an intro to dyeing Kool-Aid video that's on the Knit Crate channel. I've included it in my Dyeing Yarn with Kool-Aid playlist if you want to check that out. But it's a lot of fun, like so much fun. Uh, and so if you want to sign up for Knit Crate, uh, you can use my code chemnitz 20 I do get commissions off of that, but you can save 20% off your first month. Um, but you can also just go directly to Dyer Supplier. Um, I don't have a coupon code there, but my affiliate link is in the description. I know Kool-Aid can be hard to come by, so if you want to do some speckling with food coloring, I recommend um, sugar sprinkles or even making your own sugar sprinkles as a good alternative. Um, the yarn is Stroll from Knit Picks. Um, do you have any good sources for sparkly yarn and DK? No. Uh, I got all excited at one point because Knit Crate had some in there um, in a, oh gosh, this must have been think like a year and a half ago what that they gave a DK sparkly glimmer yarn and I was pumped because I, I'm like ooh I want that but dyer supplier never had the same base so uh so there's that but this is oh oh no I do have a zip tie um a note about my zip ties so <laughs> Um, I linked, I have my like Amazon affiliate link with the zip ties, but they changed, the manufacturer changed the listing on me. So I still have that linked in a lot of videos. Um, and then in more modern ones, I have it linked because in the past they did this once before and then they changed it back. But so just, if you're going to order the zip ties, I recommend, please just make sure that they are reusable. <laughs> um, so I linked to another one that I haven't tried that is re supposed to be reusable and I'm really excited by this colorway and the amount of restraint. Okay, I, here's what we're gonna do. That's not too hot yet. Because the acid wasn't well mixed in, I am shaking this in the pan. This isn't something I do a ton, but this is a way to help distribute the heat, um, especially if you're doing something that's more random, it's a great way to do that. But I think I'm gonna wait just five minutes and then we will flip it. Uh, but man, sometimes like I, I tend to be very big on full saturated colors, but sometimes something like this, like this was just a random swatching thing and I'm in love with it. <laughs> um, hello everyone, wow, you guys are from all over. Yeah, so I know that um, I believe that knit crates are coming out slowly because of the uh, social distancing that they're trying to have at the warehouse. Uh, and so since they have limited staff packing, then the shipping is happening in waves. Uh, but one other note is for international customers. I know that uh, some countries aren't accepting international packages right now, and so they're being held. Um, and so in some country by country, it can be a lot slower than usual. You to get the three different stores to get full line of Kool-Aid. Yeah, I, I'm fortunate in that I have one store near me that has the full rainbow, or at least they did. I haven't gone to get more Kool-Aid in a while, and I, mean, I haven't gone to the grocery store personally in a very, very long time. Uh, I just happened to usually put the stash on hand. I did try in my Kool-Aid live stream the big canisters that had sugar in them, and eh, I don't really recommend that. Um, Dharma Training has the type of the card. Oh, I didn't check that. Um, yeah, I buy, I buy most of my dye from Dharma, and I will say, so Dyer Supplier does carry Jacquard acid dyes, but I think that, uh, they're, they're cheaper at Dharma, but I think that depending on, you can get free shipping at Dyer Supplier with, I think, $175 order. I don't know if that includes the dyes or if it's just the yarn. So, I think that there would be some, like, cost benefit analysis to it. Um, and I think, uh, Dyer Supplier's free shipping is just within the U.S. Um, 
Okay. Yeah, the, I think the actual zip ties don't matter a ton, but the ones I use are 12 inches long. And I think that that's the metric that's, that's useful. Um, ooh, cotton. Um, yeah, that, that would be fun. Ooh, actually, so I know that you're probably not talking about like the literal little cotton balls, but using those to dye yarn could be really fun as an almost like stamping kind of thing. Oh, interesting. So, uh, story time. You guys know how I'm huge clubs, right? Uh, back in the day before my, gosh, I guess I was going to celebrate 5 million views on the channel. <laughs> I played this huge live stream and I broke my foot on the eve of it. And so, and I was like, well, could I still do it? But then I was at the doctor and so I couldn't, um, I couldn't delay it from my phone, and so there was a whole like, I'm okay, but I'm not okay, and so then I had to delay that. Well, on, so wait, today is Saturday, so on Thursday I'm doing laundry, and I like severely sliced my knuckle um, to the point where it was like, do I need stitches? I didn't end up needing stitches, and by that I mean I didn't go get stitches, <laughs> but it is like, I think it's. I mean, it's fine. Like, it was just like a whole day where I couldn't use my hand and I had stuff waiting for me to wash. That was so annoying. Um, but it seems to be doing pretty well. But I'm being extra careful, like, putting gloves. Like, I, I had to do some gardening yesterday. And actually, so I can dye yarn with it, but there's a lot of, like, things that require a lot of pressure. I can't dye my finger very well. But it's fine. And so, like, I mean, I can move it. The, it's really more the bandage is causing the problem. So, yeah, I'm a klutz, and I do not know my washing machine is dangerous. So, <laughs> fair warning. Oh man, but yeah. So that that's me on there. I really, really like this yarn, and it's not like you know it to be the one that I plan to do. The the one that's been in my head, I plan to do more layers. Um, but I have to decide if I want to do. I have 300 grams wet ready to go. I have to decide if I want to do 200 or 300 right away. And I'm realizing, like, I have open glass jars filled with dye and it's not enough to clean up is going to be hard. It's a lot harder doing this with uh, with everybody at home. Oh, you'll, oh, you're literally, oh, so you're literally going to dye cotton balls and then spin them. That is awesome. That sounds really, really cool. Uh, really, really cool. I am impatient. And, okay, I think the timer's going to go off in just a second. So. Um, I am going to go try to find my tongs because sometimes you need those and reduce the heat to low. Ooh! Oh, that timing was great, Rebecca. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, I got new tongs. Where are they? Because these ones are like breaking and they don't have blue ones anymore, so I'm sad. Um, I don't even know what brand these were or anything. I just got them at Bed Bath and beyond. So actually, we don't need a ton more color. I want to add a tiny bit um, because the color penetration was pretty good and I don't mind there being some white left in here. Uh, but I'm going to just add a bit more, a bit more yellow. A little bit of pink. And it's funny, whenever I flip it, I don't like that side as much. That, and we're gonna do a tiny bit because there's just a little bit on the other side. We're gonna do a little bit of some gray just for consistency. And the pan is hot but not that hot, but this should set pretty fast. I'm just going to give it five minutes, I think. So you can, I don't know if you guys can see just how easily that softness is, how much sharper some of those colors are. Once the yarn spreads out, it'll be uh, more like, it won't feel as harsh or sharp, but because there's more acid in there and there's heat now, things are striking faster. So let's set a timer for five minutes. And then think. So I know we need more water. 
in there. And um, so when I, stepping back, when I layer colors, a lot of times I like to squirt the dye across. And the reason why I go sort of across the yarn is because then you get more of the like tiny, you get smaller patches of color and then it um, can be on more strands. Where if you go along the length of the yarn, you get something that's even more um, non-repeating in that you can have some long patches of color, but only in like a small portion of the yarn. And so it's a lot of fun. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, am I seeing? Oh, hello, hello. Yeah, I'm bad about adding reminders on Instagram, but I do try uh, when I can. Uh, it depends on the everybody's being <laughs> but my voice like it's getting better but uh just like our our car has been yellow with pollen it has just been uh, a disaster i'm actually like very allergic to almost all pollen so each time i'm like I'm like oh that tree pollen and then later i'll be like oh it's that ragweed and then later i'll be like oh it's that grass <laughs> oh but i don't know right now i'm like oh yeah trees are <laughs> oh man but yeah i am excited and oh good that doesn't the inspiration photo doesn't block um it too bad but yeah i mean you guys can go pull from so many of these colors like i feel like it's mostly we're looking at the average it's mostly a lot of blue with some pops of like hints of gray some pops of yellow and then a few tiny pops of red so the colors that I pulled that I had at the bottom are not like the ones that are most represented or it doesn't show like if I was to reshift those colors to have proportion, I would have the like the twiggy and the blue and the teal be much bigger. The gray, the rest is smaller, but the, the red the smallest and then the pink fairly small as well. If I was going to do something, something variegated. Um, and I mean, okay, fine, this is variegated, but well, I mean, if I was going to do something can can did that would be like the repeating type color way, that's sort of how I would shift, shift those colors. But I also feel like that with something like this, there is leeway to play with almost any combination of colors that you want. Um, but yeah, this was definitely calling like layering and, um, and wow, well, we're going to try to join lights, which of course you won't see once you move the yarn, but that's what I want to try. Um, you had a shawl pan, you do this with Wilton dye. Yeah, um, the, I love, love, love the catering steam pan. I think the prices vary for them a lot. The one that I purchased, the listing that I purchased it from is in the video description. I haven't checked the link for a while. Mainly what's hard is I'm not allowed to buy things from my own links. Um, and so it means that double checking links that you generated a long time ago, like, I don't want to click on them because then like it like it isn't easy to like clear that yeah. so <laughs> i don't know but so the, the one that i bought i think they tended to be between like 20 and 30 dollars which given the amount that i've used it it was a very good investment like my multi-pot that i used was more expensive but uh but yay got those lights here welcome welcome and i'm going to need to make sure to make this picture smaller all right, I think we're under a minute, so I'm gonna stand back up. Nope, that is the camera in the back. So many things. Oh, maybe I'll leave it up there. That's a good spot for it. But, oh, my voice. So yes, if you're just tuning in, this first one, which actually does work pretty well with the photo, this first one is my uh, swatch, <laughs> which is something that and and i'll add like i have since this is my job i have a lot of yarn i have a lot a lot a lot of yarn at my disposal and so part of my job is my the main part of my job is to film these videos um but then what i do with the yarn is it goes and ends up in my etsy shop which is the way that i fund all of this but it it's giving me this freedom to do more random experiments on yarn itself instead of on a paper towel. But um, this kind of swatch that I did would work really well on a mini skein. 
so for example, if you had some, like even like three, five gram minis that you made and make one skein of yarn stretch, you can test and see the, the wet hues. So this will be much more pastel once it dries, but you can, you can then do some tests. Um, this is just a pretty, very simple. This is a lot of restraint for me, guys. Like to not go and add more and more color. But sometimes I really like to get let the yarn speak to me. And I really like where this one ended up. Um, So since we are using, since we are using um, commercial dyes today, everything is dedicated dye equipment. So I will occasionally, for example, use the steam pan with food coloring, but I wouldn't ever use it for food, if that makes sense. Like I'm perfectly comfortable using food coloring um, to dye yarn in my cooking pots and pans. But uh, once something goes and is like, you know, what is that? Sorry for the scraping. Um, you know, once a zip tie is dedicated for dye, then I don't use that same zip tie with food ever. Um, so I hope that that makes sense. And when I'm laying this yarn in the pan, um, I'm trying to have mostly one side of it up just for as much balance as possible. And then I will spread it out more. We'll go ahead and add a third skein and we'll add more water as well. Uh, what else did I want to add? Um, ah, and the other thing with using dedicated dye equipment and using commercial dyes is you want to make sure you have proper safety materials and items. So for example, whenever I'm dealing with dye powder, I wear a respirator mask. Um, and that is very important um, just because you don't want to inhale the dyes. And so I'm adding, well, some pre-soak water that was non-specified the volume. Now, one thing that just occurred to me is because the first yarns that I added in soaked up a lot of um, the liquid that was in here, which means that uh, there will be some kind of equi equilibrium at some point, but they had more acid in there. And so since I just added the cool water, this is not hot yet. Otherwise, I recommend being careful. But uh, I am trying to spread the fibers out. And this is going to be our canvas. So the immersion could be lower, but I think it's in a good spot. Maybe I will add some more acid. And a lot of times, so one thing I can, I'm personally bad about is gloves. You notice I'm wearing one. That's because I'm trying to keep that thing, my finger as dry as I can. But of course, wearing gloves makes me sweat. So yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, that is ready. And now I just need to, I want to wait until it starts. I'm going to try to heat back up and I'm going to let it start to bubble a little bit. And then we'll go in to add color. Now without a thickener, some of the colors could be sharp. Some of them could spread out. And so my plan is to try to draw some hearts and layer some hearts on here. But that's my plan. <laughs> so as we get started, we'll see what the colors do. And we'll modify it. So that's the, I guess, so there's a lot of things that are my goal to teach. But one is definitely flexibility. And so sometimes you might have a vision in your head of the colorway that you want to create. And it's okay to let that go if you need to, to let it go and just change. Um, and that's fine. Um, so, okay, thank you, Quinn, for checking it out. Yes, my pan is a four inch deep pan. Oh. Is it four or is it six? Maybe it is four. I think four is just the right one. I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh, I can't tell. 
But I wouldn't go shallower than four inch, so I would recommend four or even a six inch would be fine. But I can fit a lot of water in it. Um, so yeah, the yellow I have is golden yellow. Um, in theory, I could add a touch more orange to it. Um, but yeah, I, I think that it definitely is a bit more golden in the picture, but there's also some brights. Uh, so it's hard. So when I, the gold that I have there, okay, so this time what I didn't do, I picked colors that approximately match. I think the gold in the picture is brighter than the gold that I swatched. Um, because, well, there, there was a, been a lot going on this month. So last month, when I picked colors, I used like a color picker to get like an exact match. And this time I was going more approximate when I was pulling the colors at the bottom versus using like an eyedropper to get the exact hex code of the color and then putting that in. Um, but yeah, so I was just kind of doing my best. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that some more golden could also work really well. Um, doing a creation with you here on Tuesday, awesome. So a bowl of turquoise with Kool-Aid is a bit hard. You can get a beautiful bright blue with um, blue raspberry lemonade with multiple packets. Um, and yeah, it, blues and greens are hard. I recommend supplementing with some liquid food coloring, to be honest. Um, so the, the greens tend to be like closer to green apple from Dharma. And so to get more of that turquoise, I would do like a tiny bit of green in with some blue, but you're going to want a lot um, of color because the blue is fairly pastel. Um, I mean, if you check out my cake dyeing video, I use the blue and the green and I use I think four or five packets of each in that to get it like saturated. But the more you add, then it definitely does have some saturation, which is wonderful. Um, but, all right. Okay, I see some movement. <laughs> I believe this is the one nice thing about doing these streams is that I can't, oh wait, no, I forgot. I wanna move this up. Um, one of the nice things about doing these streams is that I can, <laughs> I can't see the stove from where I'm sitting, but I can see um, it on the webcam. All right, we are heating up. And, huh. I'm going to get another glove for my other hand. My other hand. All right, so this yellow. May not be the best one to start with, but that's a big heart. <laughs> um, let's see if I can make a smaller one. That's not. Yeah, this might be a little harder than I thought. I was like, oh, maybe I can just like do it like a dash and dash. It's requiring a bit more um, intent. But we'll at least get, like, a photo. <laughs> Sorry, I did that color. Let's do... I'm now focusing, so it's hard to talk. Okay, let's try. The thing about this that you can probably tell immediately is that in laying out these hearts, um, well, first of all, you can see that there's some spread, but wait, what else could you see immediately? Oh. That we've got three skeins of yarn here, and the way I've got this laid out, it is going to be extremely different from one to the next. But we are going to just layer on some amount of hearts, and then I think that I might end up abandoning 
Oh, maybe I'll keep doing hearts, but I think very quickly you won't be able to see the hearts anymore. And okay, I'm gonna get my camera and take a photo of this before I can't. <laughs> But yeah, for sure, this is not as um, not as easy as as I originally thought it might be. Um, but we'll keep going a little bit, and then I'll add maybe a few more pictures. And I mean, maybe I can keep up with the theme. We just might not see. Okay, the hearts are just gonna get sloppier. That's all. And I know that the gray color in there is mostly the background versus the hearts. Oh, this is actually kind of working. Okay, I just have to like give myself this permission to really go big. So it's definitely hard to get to the edges of the pan doing it like this. I actually don't mind this. This isn't what I pictured originally. But I'm not mad that, okay, we can do some like half hearts. The nice thing about like adding this yellow on over some of these other colors is just the way that it's layering and bringing some more of those greens. This is, I'm gonna do some dots of color around some of these edges, just because knowing that I can't really heart in there very well. But I actually like where this has gone. Wow, I actually really like this. Okay, I'm gonna take off my glove, take off. I mean, the, the colors that I've added are very much on the surface level. When I pick this up and move it, um, Uh, okay, I'm gonna wait 10 minutes. When I pick this up and move it, you will see that there's gonna be a lot more like white patches, but this feels like, once I got into it, this is really, really fun. Um, I'm gonna post some of these pictures. I have no idea how the cues are coming through, um, but this is fun. Um, okay, I'm going to post the pictures on my Instagram story and then we'll um, come back. And by come back, I mean I'm, I haven't gone anywhere, but then I'll come check the chat. Um, and then let's do. Um, Um, it definitely feels very, very different. Um, Brandy, I'm using a combination of Jacquard and Dharma acid dyes today. So I'm using commercial dyes. But 
Yeah, you can still sort of see the hearts right now. And I have to say the flavor of this yarn feels so different from if I was doing like my standard zigzag. And I'm really into it. Uh, at first I was like, this could be hard. But once I started going, then I got used to the motion and how much to squeeze. And I like it. I like it a lot. Um, uh, uh oh. Ah, uh, those lovely edges. Um, yes, so I'm using acid dyes. Um, yes, this would be really beautiful on a soft one with gar gum. I'm not sure if I could squirt super easily, but uh, painting, so what I found with painting on soft blanks is versus doing big broad swipes like you might actually do with paint on the canvas, I found that it's more like stamping. Uh, it's possible that with a thickener, you could do this with a squeeze bottle, though. But I haven't tried that with gar, gar gum before. Um, ooh, Ada, that's a good question. So there was uh, some discussion about spinning from cotton balls. And there's a question saying, um, so like the cotton balls that you use from your face, or did you buy like balls of cotton fiber? Uh, so I'm curious to know that as well. And I'll try to remember who vocalize and update that. But actually, the chat replays should be available. So if you're watching this video on a replay, uh, you can see some of the questions that might come up through the course of all this. I am waving my hands a lot. <laughs> but I uh, I am excited by this. OK, so the, the, the answer on the cotton balls is the kind that you use on your face. Welcome, welcome. Uh, our, I'll make the inspiration photo better. Bigger. So I would say that what's coming through on the monitor feels a lot more vibrant and intense than what I actually had in the inspiration photo. The, and now I actually am really standing up, I'm comparing to, yeah, I mean the colors look more vibrant and more saturated on my phone as well. Um, but the thing to remember, and the thing to always remember when you are playing with dyeing yarn is that colors will look more vibrant and saturated when wet than they do when dry. I can't tell you how many times I've dyed some yarn and been like, oh, this is super saturated. I don't want to go any further. And then once it dried, I, I kind of wish that I went a little further. And so that's something to keep in mind. Now, I'm trying to keep restraint because part of me would want to keep layering and layering and layering. But at some point, if you keep layering those colors more, then these other colors you have will start to become undertones and subtle shifts which can be super beautiful, but you'll start to lose the, the yellow and that pink in there. And so that's why I'm going to, and the white. So I would like to have some white, but I don't want big, huge patches of white, if that makes sense. I think another fun way to do this, actually, would be to dye all the brights. So this is one thing I consider. I consider dyeing all the brights and then glazing it. Um, but that would be more like, if there was graffiti that you painted over, so then I decided not to. But I think it would be fun to do that as well. Um, yeah, now I need some cotton balls so I can try to spin it. Um, I've never, sp I don't think I've ever spun cotton before. Um, but, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so do you guys have any other, oh. <laughs> fiber by nature, that was what I was just saying. I wonder why it's holding, like I'm having to approve your comments. Um, yeah, so the the webcam, I I mean, it, what I'm seeing is, is a bit intense, but it the, basically I think the webcam has a little more trouble with some of the reds and purples, um, and so some of that doesn't come through as well. Uh, I'm hoping, I mean, with everything I don't know, I was hoping and originally planning to try to upgrade my computer to get something with more processing power um, and then to try to really go in with the like, streaming software and see if I could really figure out how to do more with the images and correcting, but uh, it's been hard to do on the fly. Um, and now, well, I'm yeah, waiting on uh, big uh, capital upgrades. <laughs> um, so you're curious, how do I come up with the inspiration photos? Oh gosh, lots of ways. So a lot of times, 
there are a few royalty free imaging sites that I use. Um, and actually, initially, I had like a vision in my head of a you might have a vision of what I want to use. I actually have a private Pinterest board where I save pictures I think that are beautiful. Um, so sometimes I pull things from that. But like this time I had a vision of something I wanted to do. And sometimes like I try to vary the type of picture. Like if I have something more monochromatic, I try to go with something more bright. I try to, if I have something very cool toned, I try to find something more warm toned to sort of mix it up. But sometimes like, and they'll be like, okay, I need something warm toned. I'm like, ooh, or like, oh, I want to play with orange. What's something orange that I should play with? And so sometimes like that's where I pull these these ideas from. Uh, but yeah, I have all these. And so once I finish this colorway, if there's still time, then I'll probably do some random graffiti inspired, but with random colors that are in my leave no day behind. But yeah, I was thinking like, okay, what? Of course, so I mix a bunch of colors for today. So I was like, what do I have um, that I need to use up? Was one thing that I was really thinking of today because I don't have space. I keep I keep my dye stocks in a bin under the sink. Um, and so they're in a bin. So as a secondary container, in case one leaks, then it'll catch the dye. But the bins are full. And so I've been able to make more dye stocks. And so I'm like, I need to use up these empties so then I have space mix more. And of the colors that I have mixed almost empty, I'm out of like blue and red and yellow. <laughs> so that's limited some of my color choices somewhat. Um, but yeah, so sometimes I would say like 10% of the inspiration photos I pick are ones that are photos that I've taken myself. Um, and so I think that it, it varies. It varies a lot. Um, but I do, like, what I also look for in these photos is something that will give me, like, an idea for a technique, and sometimes it's a piece of yarn base that I think would go along really well. Uh, today I'm just using scroll because um, I need to dye more of it. I have different bins, so, like, I store the yarn from my shop in these, like, big uh, plastic totes. And so, like, you know, I go worse in one that's full, you know, so various ones are full, various are like mostly empty, and so that's sometimes how I pick the yarn that I'm going to use based on like, oh, I need more of this. <laughs> but the mailman is here, yay! Yay for yarn deliveries. Um, yeah, and also it's, uh, what do I have a lot of and I'm running out of space for on my shelf and these stuff. <laughs> Um, okay. Oh, it's good time. Oh, maybe the time is on the Let me see. I saw. Um, yeah, so this was fun. So then, like, I was looking at a bunch of things, and then I was looking at graffiti. I wanted something rainbow esque without. Ooh. So the colors have definitely spread. So that's actually really pretty. And notice I have not pressed down on it yet. But yeah, we'll we'll flip this in a moment. Um, is that that was funny? Um, what was I saying? But oof, yeah, it's feeling very saturated. Um, I'm curious. And since we're gonna be flipping anyway, I can go ahead and move things around. I'm gonna reduce the heat. A little more. Um, but yeah, see that? You know, if I look just a little below, these aren't going very deep. Uh, and so that's why with this kind of technique, and as I pull it up, look at that. That's just beautiful. So we're definitely going to have white in here. But as I flip this over, like there is almost no color that has gone all the way through. There's enough acid in here that things are striking quickly. Now, as I said, I am fine with there being some white left over. In fact, I welcome that. Um, but I don't want the yarn to feel super unbalanced. And so you don't want half the skein to be like super pigmented and then the other to be super pale. Um, so we will be flipping multiple times and I'm trying to 
spread things out. So, yep, so now we have another canvas. I'm making sure I am on the right camera. Yes. All right, let's start, start with the yellow. When I'm layering colors on things, I do often like to start, I often like to start with some of the paler colors and then work my way up. Um, that's because it's easier to like see, that's not the best part. It's easier to see what I might need. I'm sorry about the dog, that might be our mail arriving. Yeah, it just makes it easier to see where I might want to add more color. Whoa, 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 what's going on? Keith? What are you doing? Okay, because you just, I didn't know he was upstairs. I think with the quarantine and like everything, our dog finally realized that we have an upstairs to our house, which has been pretty hilarious because occasionally we'll find him in like the boy's room or something looking out the window. And I think even though, cause I work from home, it took him like a month to figure out that Keith wasn't leaving for the day and that he was working from home, uh, which I find hilarious. Um, He is a very smart dog, big heart. He's a very smart dog, almost to like our detriment. So one issue with adding color too quickly, um, which could be an issue for me today. One issue with adding color a little bit too fast is that the colors, if they're spreading at all, they could spread and mix more, which is not really what we want here today. But the goal is to try to get some of the color across all of the strands, which doesn't always work, but that's my goal. And of these colors that I mixed, I've used, I would say between, oops, I would use between a half to two thirds of what's in the bottles, um, which means that, uh, I mean, I know I'm gonna wanna flip the yarn inside out, because as I move it, again, there's gonna be, uh, this is not going through many, many strands. So the more you can spread the yarn, the fewer times you need to flip. Like, the first swatch colorway I did, which is way less pigmented than what we're doing here, but that first colorway, um, you know, I flipped once and added a tiny bit more color. And so you can see just that this has a lot more. Now, if I wanted more spread, if I wanted the colors to spread out further and so then I needed to flip it less, start with a cool, cool water and a lot less acid. Uh, some color might start striking right away, but you can get more spread uh, if the color isn't striking yet. Um, 10 minutes. But before I sit down, actually, I might come over for a brief moment. I think that I might send, uh, I might do a quick commercial break in a moment, but I'm only squatting because I'm going to pre sew some more yarn. Just so we have that on hand and I'm gonna um yeah actually I'm gonna go do that now um and so hang tight um great commercial break and I'll be right back and if you don't see the 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 like commercial don't worry uh a YouTube algorithm decides who sees it and things like that um so 
now I'm now I sit here because of the delay to wait to see my face pop away so I can press the button and then go grab more yarn and I just inserted it. So that is a measure of the leg. But I might bring out like my kettle too. If there's, um, yeah, we're we'll be moving in to a, uh, we'll still probably not necessarily carts, but we'll do some inspir inspired colorways based on, um, sort of like this layered style that I'm doing. But we'll be pulling in more random colors that I have on hand. All right. Um, and I'm going to put zip ties on this. Eventually, so I find that the zip ties tend to hold on to a shape, especially if they are hot. So that makes the pop or like the nylon a little more moldable, moldable I guess. So for example, and this one right here, it's like not as good of a catch, but it still works. Um, so eventually I usually do have to retire them, uh, but I get, I mean, you can see how saturated they are. They go through many dye rounds and thankfully they don't seem to leak the dye. So that is something I am grateful for. Okay. My boo boo. No band aid, stay on. I just want my hand to heal as fast as possible so I can do more. Okay, and I've got some yarn pretty soaking, so that is good. Six minutes on the timer, but let's come and peek. Yes, there is a lot of color. I think especially with the like blue and some of the red because some of that is not as perfectly mixed. Okay, yeah, we need more time. It might need more water too. And I'm gonna come and sit back down and check out your questions. Yeah, I'm gonna make my coffee pop. Um, let's see. Um, that's more yellow. So the, like, yeah, the, the, the yellow is is there. That's actually one of the colors I'm running out of. Um, so that's why one reason why I'm going a bit slower because I know that there's probably gonna be about two more rounds of doing these hearts. Um, I'm using commercial acid dyes, so a combination of Derma and Jacquard acid dyes. Um, yay, we're playing with yarn and dyes! Woohoo! Oh man. Um, yeah, the, the hearts is just fun. Um, it's a fun one, and I don't always take all of my photos this literally. But this seemed like a fun one to be really literal. And you know, last June I picked a like a rainbow scene for Pride Month. I haven't decided. I do love dyeing a rainbow so much. So I just I haven't decided if um, I want to pick another rainbow because this month is kind of rainbowy. So I'll need to think about that. Um, but yeah, no, I agree. Like there's, and so I guess here's here's one of the things is that. You can go and try to get the color of balance and you can go really literal off the photo and try to get the perfect balance and the perfect hues. And sometimes I try more to match the hues. But today, when looking at this, it was going more about the feeling. And I think especially with like, you know, like social distancing and the extra isolation and stuff, it just felt like we all needed a bit more love. Um, and so that's why when I saw this one, I was like, yep, that's perfect. <laughs> It is perfect for the what I want to evoke today. Um, 
So why the light is on the bottom? So it strikes down. Um, it's less, so the paler colors do, depending on the color, they often do tend to strike faster, but I like to put them on first because it helps me with the placement of other colors, if that makes sense. And so sometimes I'll go back in and add more of those colors I did at the beginning, but uh, maybe it's also because you can always add more color, but it's harder to take it away. And so it's easier for me to have more restraint with the gray going on top once I see what's already there with the like, but if I'm doing the gray first, I might add a lot more because I'm like, well, this blank space, I need to add stuff. So, yeah. So I know you guys are definitely an international crowd. If you're Rebecca, oh, thank you. <laughs> I mean, this like kind of random approach is one of my favorite techniques. I think that it's funny because if I were to I haven't ever developed like a yarn line or like something like a yarn collection. Like occasionally with samplers, I'll do like a limited edition colorway and then dye, you know, 20 or something of that. But, you know, I haven't ever done like a, a series where I have multiple colorways but are somewhat like related or something like that. Um, and yeah, but I like I think that you know if I was gonna do like a collection of a lot of colors, like they would involve a lot of resists, uh, this, and then one of my other favorite techniques is layering on dry dye powders and letting them spread and um, doing that technique. What's the best place to find jacquard acid dyes? So I um, have per or I've received them from a few different places. So Dyer Supplier for a project that has not yet been announced. Um, he actually gave me a complete collection of jacquard acid dyes uh, at some point last summer. Um, and so Dyer Supplier does have jacquard acid dyes, um, but I most frequently buy my acid dyes from Dharma Trading Company. And so for disclosure, I am an affiliate with Dyer Supplier, so I get a commission if you use my links there, but I don't have a um, any affiliate relationship with Dharma. Um, so yeah, so it is, I mean, the, the dyes are cheaper at Dharma, but I think that depending on how much stuff you're ordering, then you could end up getting some discounts for, with like the paying for shipping. Uh, so it's worth, uh, you know, factoring that into account. Um, but a lot of times you can find Jacquard acid dyes at um, some fine art supply stores, like I think it's Lick or something. Sometimes they have jacquard dyes. Um, so, yeah. Um, have you ever worked with other different wools? Um, so, meaning I have dyed with a lot of different, I've dyed a lot of different breeds of wool. Two of my favorites are um, some of the ones, or I guess some of the ones I dyed most frequently are Merino and Peruvian Highland wool, but BFL is another one I really like to dye, and I've dyed a lot of like superwash and like, non-superwash, um, and a lot of different blends. I, I like to do wool silk blends, wool cashmere blends. Um, so, oh, I don't know why it's retracted. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a great question. Um, and so I love, I love using a lot of different wool. Um, it's just important that you make sure to pick the right dye type for the fiber content in your yarn. So today I'm dyeing wool, even though it is a wool nylon blend, so acid dyes work great. You could do this um, food coloring with the setup. But if I wanted to dye cotton yarn, it wouldn't, it isn't quite as easy. And I haven't had as much success doing a colorway like this on cotton. Um, so that's something that I'm still experimenting with and learning. But also, not all cotton yarn is created equal, uh, and so different brands of cotton take up dye differently. Not, well, yeah, brands. Um, I think it just has to do with how it's been processed. Okay, but we are going to now. So I'm sort of flipping it and making the inside the outside. And each time I move, look at how pretty that is. 
each time I move this, um, each time I move the yarn, there are some areas that are going to get heavier layered and we will potentially lose more and more white. Um, but, you know, that's sort of the reality and goes back to what I was talking about at the very beginning about how dyes are not opaque. Um, so unlike paint, where you can have one wall and a person can layer on more and more and more paint and you can keep seeing more color, that isn't quite how it works when you are using dyes. So it's just worth keeping that in mind. And so I don't know if we're gonna do a fourth flip. I think if I do a fourth flip, it might not be with hearts. I think a fourth flip would add some spot dyeing. Uh, because like, you know, we're getting more and more spread and color in here. But for now, I'm sticking with, you know, our hearts. But another thing I could do, which I often don't do, is I could, um, I could cover this. And that's not something I do very often. Big heart, little heart, and a little flip of color, flip of color. I forgot, I think I had forgotten why I don't love peacock blue, and now I remember why a little bit. Um, it doesn't dissolve well, it's just not, the color is beautiful, um, but it's not, it's not my favorite. And that is okay. Lots of half hearts coming in here. I don't want to over do it. I'm like straddling that line. Okay. Train going too far. But I really like where it's going. Ah! I've got so much dye everywhere that I want to use. But especially if I do another round, then I just might not have time. <laughs> Oh man, um, so in theory, I would love, love, love to keep going for a very long time. Um, and actually, I am going to um, I would love to keep going for a very long time. Like I have the stamina, but the reality is, um, I work in my kitchen. Uh, so my studio is my kitchen and my family is here and in pre-COVID I would send them to like a museum or the zoo or something if I was going to do a daytime stream but or I would do it on a weekday when um the kids were at school so it just makes it's, it's harder <laughs> for me to film um and it limits the amount of time that I can tell my family they can't come through the kitchen so um Ah, Teresa, I'm not sure what you missed. Um, this is the third flip, or the third, I guess the second flip, the third side. But I was lamenting, realizing it's almost 11 already. And look, I want to dye so much more yarn, but uh, there's just limitations. Um, the loopy lines are really exciting me. I normally do harsher angles, and I think that the final colorway, you might not be able to tell that I did loopy, like hearts versus lines, I don't think. Maybe I'll do lines next and then we can try uh, try to compare, I'm not sure. But it's, it's really, really fun. So for some dyers that use, that will do 400 grams of yarn in one of these pans. And, you know, for the techniques I like, I just have to flip so many times. So I, I, I don't know. <laughs> um, maybe like not as many people do these techniques, I, I don't know. Um, but you can see why, like when I'm doing something like this. Now, granted, I could have two of these pans 
was going on the stove at the same time, but you know, it would take me a really long time to do 20 in this kind of color life. So uh, I think that there's a difference between if you're going to try to do a, a you know, sweater dwarf in a variegated colorway like this, there are some techniques you're more likely to do because of efficiency. And I think that's just the, the reality. So that's what, you know, I am. Um, and not saying like, oh, I'm like the most like unique novel person, but it's just since I do really small batches and I don't repeat color ways very often, that's what enables me uh, to put more time into some of the color ways like this. Um, yeah, I, I, Denise, I don't have plans to swatch this one. I wish I was able to swatch more, but uh, going back to like the small batches, like, you know, I, yeah, the, the, the extra time going into a swatch, I try to do it when I know that it would be really hard to visualize what the yarn looks like. Especially if I'm doing something like I've never done before, I think that it's really important for like a self-striping kind of colorway to show how big those stripes are. But um, yeah, so that's at this point, that's about all I swatch because, yeah, it's um, just me. Um, I don't, but I do try when I show, when I use the yarn that I've dyed, I try to show that um, if I can at the end of the video. Um, can you get the dye that I'm using on Amazon? I'm not sure. Um, maybe. I haven't checked. Uh, I mean, you, you probably can. Uh, I mean, maybe not the Dharma Acid dyes because those are specific to Dharma Trading Company specifically, but Jacquard might be. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm not sure if they're on Amazon. I haven't checked. Um, I try, like, whenever possible to link to the suppliers that I actually use. Um, but sometimes I link to things on Amazon, even though I buy them in person in the store, just because, like, it's, it's possible to find it there, but not everything is possible to find there. Uh, no worries. Um, oh, and I'm never like offended or upset if someone asks for swatching. I just try to share the like. It's a very frequent request that I get, um, and yeah, it would be, it would just uh, change the uh, production time significantly. <laughs> um, but yeah, I oh no, there's so many things that I want to do. Uh, I'm like. I'm, I'm going to go check the yarn. I'm like getting, I'm like, I want to flip, I want to flip, because I want to declare this one finished, but I don't want to declare it finished before it's actually finished. And so the thing with this colorway specifically is that, oh man, it could look so, oh good. So that was maybe about five minutes. There's like a hint of color. The thing, the concern is, is that if I move it too soon, then, um, we get more of like a wash of color and we could lose some white. Uh, and so that peacock blue is a very frustrating, frustrating color. So I am gonna give it more time, even though that is not what I want to do. And I do not, I'm not making things easier for myself yet. Let me show you. Um, the dyes from today, I've just added to my leftover dye issue. Oh man, oh man. I'm trying to think about how I'm going to, where are the lids for those jars? Because the last thing I want to do is have a bunch of open jars around. That sounds like the makings of a disaster. jars here, but I have no idea what the lids are. The lids I have are for the big jars. It could be in the shed, I suppose. All right, I'm going for it. It has been seven minutes. Um, okay, that's looking pretty good. Um, 
removing it, I didn't immediately see something that is calling for me to add more color, which is good. There are definitely some darker and lighter patches, which I think is totally fine. Aha, so like right here, so when I said like I'm gonna spot check, I think I'm gonna add a tiny bit like there and there. So like maybe towards that end, but otherwise I am happy. And so now that we're spot checking, I'm not really swirling it as much. Um, I am doing more just line work. And let's do maybe like some curly work, but okay. I think that that is going to call it, but I'm going to need to give that a little bit of time. Um, Maybe this is what I should do. Sorry for the, the noise, just promise you will forgive my um, dirty stove. Okay, I've moved this to the back burners to give that more time and to allow us to come in and just have some wild fun with some more dye or some more yarn. And this time I'm only going to do 200 grams because this will allow me to spread things out a lot more. There's no water in here yet. Um, so I have a third skein pre-soaked, but I was just dumping that pre-soaked water in. And it's not bad. That's actually a pretty low margin. Why aren't you water? going down. Okay, I will want more water. I want more water and I want to reduce that heat even more. And one, two, three. And then one, okay, there we go. That is a good amount of everything. And then we're gonna start heating it up. And so this, I'm not thinking about the photo as much, but we are gonna think about more using up some of these colors. <laughs> And that is the name of the game, but I am going to come and check the chat. Um, hello. You're curious how stripes would look with the loops. Um, so Jacquard does have a few available on Amazon. Um, thank you for that. Uh, so I can tell you from looking at the yarn that I did with the loops, um, and I'm obsessed with that colorway, by the way. Uh, it looks very, very similar to what I would do with lines. So normally when I do lines, and we will be having some different colors. Normally when I do lines, this is sort of the like thing I do. It's bigger, um, a little bolder. So the main difference I think isn't going to be about the lines versus swirls. I think the biggest difference um, in here will be the um, the way that the colors repeat or don't repeat. Because I think on the other colorway, you could go through a much greater section with or without particular colors, if that makes sense. Um, I hate this blue. Um, I mean, I love the, the the hue of it, and we're totally going to get speckles, which is going to be gorgeous. 
but the blue is a pain. This blue is a pain in my tuchus. Um, and I was like, why don't I ever use this one? And so look, <laughs> that was faster. That was a lot faster. Oh, I want some gray. Um, so yeah, I did decide that we'll go through and do something fairly similar, but I think I also have added more color here and there's only 200 grams. So I don't think I'm gonna need to flip things as much because I think there's more spread in here. Uh, if that makes sense. So, all right, I've got that timer set and we will, uh, let's add more vinegar. Um, just so that way we can. Oh, oh there's actually more than I thought in there. Um, <laughs> yeah, I buy these like massive containers of vinegar. Uh, and which honestly would probably be a good reason for me to switch to citric acid at this stage because I just used so much vinegar. Um, but uh, I don't know. I'm used to vinegar, so that actually does play a big part in it for me. Um, so does the peacock separate or crush? Yeah, the peacock is kind of crashes out a bit, and so it doesn't make as good of a stock. Um, it's a beautiful color. I prefer to use it as a dry powder. I think I had just forgotten that. Um, <laughs> all right, I am going to run to my shed real quick um, just to check to see if I can find the lids of those containers. So I will be right back. Okay, this is a real mystery. Unless these little jars are ones that I grabbed that I never had lids for. Maybe I never had dedicated bed lids for these. Um, that actually is a bigger possibility. Um, that these are jars that I, and I keep everything that I use for dyeing, separate for any, everything I use for food, but I think, I think I'm gonna have to write requisition some lids from other sources to come on Rebecca oh and one of these won't work that's way big How come I have 10 million lid inserts, but no of the like ring? remember if that I just raided my canning dash. Um, let's go over and switch the counter. 
Um, a lot of like, a lot of times, I think another thing that I would probably do differently is potentially just mix dyes when I needed to use them for something specific versus um, having like stocks on hand. Like if, when I did, so I did a, like a limited edition colorway for Hanukkah one year. And when I did that, when I did that, I um, I mixed the frozen dye stock, and I mixed enough that I then had some left over. But I think my dye stock preference going forward, with the exception of a few colors that I like to have on hand, my preference might be to only mix the dye stock when I want to use enough at a reproducible concentration. Use that fresh dye stock for the dyeing um, that I have in mind, and then. And so only after that, um, and then mostly just mix things fresh like this. Like they're random and I layered them based on, diluted based on feel and the hue I wanted versus playing with the concentration. And so, but that's personal preference. And so I try to demonstrate many different ways when it comes to the dyeing process. Um, Yes, the rings are equivalent to Tupperware lids. Amen. So I've been using, you know, those little plastic pint containers and stuff. Oh my gosh, I have so many of those lids, but not as many of the actual containers. And that's because I've re recently re requisitioned some of the containers for a project. But I'm going to share one of these line ones onto uh, my Instagram stories. And I know not everyone is on social media, but unfortunately, there's not a good way for you guys to share pictures with me on YouTube, which is a bit of a bummer. Or more than a bit, it's an actual complete bummer. Okay, I do wish there was more yellow in here, but I am running out. And you can see, what is that purple from the red? Um, so can, you can pair this if you go back and watch on the replay to when I first flipped our other graffiti yarn, you will see that there is more um, color that is present on this other side. And I think that there's two things that I could say immediately that go into that. One, when I'm doing this line technique, I'm probably squirting more dye each time. All right, so that's one thing. The next thing is that um, the yarn is more spread out, so there's more space for things to move. And I guess those are probably the two main points. But we are at least using up the dye that I mixed specifically for today. So it's possible that with this, I'm only going to need to do, I might not need to do a third flip, or I might only need to do some spot checks of our third flip. And I do try with layering to change the angles. Um, and the reason for changing the angles is that if I just went straight back and forth with every color, then it, um, if I went straight back and forth, you would end up with something that was semi-repeating. And this would be, I would call this a non-repeating colorway because the distance between the reds isn't gonna be the same throughout. And so this kind of colorway is something that won't necessarily pool, um, which is nice depending on like the type of yarn that you like to use. Peacock. But it's funny because sometimes you forget like why you, oh, peacock is tapped. Sometimes you forget why you may or may not use certain colors anymore. And so it's fun to have like a reminder. And so this gray that I'm using today, I think had like some brown in it, I, or actually could it have been from a different project? I'm not sure. This was left over from something. Um, so, and I have another skein and on that one, I might go 
super saturated depending on the timing. Okay, I'm gonna turn off the heat because I guess the timer went off. Turn off the heat on our hearts skein. Um, I'm gonna try and I'm gonna set 10 minutes here. I'm gonna try really, really hard to keep them separate as separate colorways. So love the strip. Yes, there is yellow in there. It's not really showing picking through on camera. It's a lot less. Um, so yeah, but the I, I also miss the heart. So on my stories, it's just funny to see the like, I think that the yarn itself might feel similar, but maybe not. But anyway, you can see that the difference in, um, so I mean, what I just did up here with those like stripes, I love that. That's one of my favorite ways to do. And I'm even, believe it or not, folding back. I could layer so much more and go so much more saturated and then you can end up with something that even though it feels wild right now the final result could feel super subtle because you just have these like undertone shifts which is a lot of fun to do so this is definitely one of my favorite techniques but you can see how much faster this went than the hearts did but I like the hidden meaning of the hearts and so this this colorway has just as much of my heart in it, but it was a little less time. And so it's just something to consider because I think, again, the colorways are gonna feel very similar. They're gonna feel related. I'm assuming I'll be able to tell the difference between them, but that's just something to keep in mind. Um, and it, what's funny is that I was intending to pull in more colors, but I had enough of these. I'm like, oh, let's, yeah, let's do side by side and just see. Um, yeah, it was fun to take, sometimes it's fun to go really literal with the color inspiration or the inspiration photo. And so that's the thing. You can be inspired by a photo and pick, like, you could do something like this and really not pick all the colors. There's so much that you can do. Um, and so in general, and I guess another little reminder, in general, when I do a live stream, I try my best to within a week get up a little recap that shows what the finished dry yarn looks like using like the, the DSLR so I can give like more close-ups and more details on the colorway. But with these dialogue live streams, the recap will come out and usually they come out in like four to six weeks, <laughs> I'll be honest. The goal is three, usually four to six. It gives you guys time to dye yarn inspired by the same photo and submit it to me. And so the way that you could be featured in this recap video, I'm gonna make my inspo photo big. There's two ways that you could be featured. One is by posting the picture of your yarn and use the hashtag Chemnitz Dialogue on Instagram. And the other way is there is this photo on my Facebook page, uh, reply to on uh, that photo with a comment. Now I do have a Facebook group, Chemnitz Lab, um, which has been growing really, really fast. Um, I try to like check and let in new members around once a week. Um, but uh, I do also have this photo shared in there, but anything shared in that group is kept private by default. So that is just something to keep in mind. But as far as the yarn base and the technique, um, you know, if you knit something with the yarn by the time I've done a recapture of that, and I'll try to include that. So I just like to show the different ways people interpret it. And I think that that's really, really fun. And so that's one reason why I delay the recap is to give you guys time to submit stuff. So, yeah. But um, I guess while I'm sitting, subscribe, like, turn on notifications. I try to schedule these dialogue live streams far in advance, so there's notice. But uh, sometimes I start a live stream and there's not a lot of notice. And you really don't want to miss any of it. Um, and if you're already subscribed and you want to support the channel in another way, and I'll say that subscribing and watching the videos and commenting and liking the videos, that's the biggest way to support everything I'm doing. Um, that is by far the, the best way to support Chemnitz, support me. But if, if you want to support on other levels, I do have a Patreon. And as I mentioned, I have my Etsy shop. And so there's links to that in the description. I even have a tiny bit of merch on Zazzle. <laughs> Mainly because I wanted to make some stuff for myself, and so I put it in my shop. <laughs> so there is that as well. 
And oh, I guess another way is like I have affiliate links to things I use. And so affiliate links are like a win-win um, because you buy something that maybe you wanted to buy anyway, and then I get some commission. So um, yeah. <laughs> It's really like, yeah, I mean, at some point I've been meaning to do some kind of live stream take questions and talk about like the business and things like that. And I would say that you know, my experience running like an indie dyer business is very different from a lot of other indie dyers, mainly because I consider my business to primarily be this, it to be YouTube, it to be teaching. Um, and for me, the shop and everything is secondary, even though like, that is a huge way how I fund all of this. So, up. And, yes. There will be a herd of cattle coming through. About 10 years. And by cattle, I mean young children. But they are checking for, um, checking to see if I have, um, uh, they're checking to see if, uh, yeah, I was like, if I'm dealing with dry powder, then I don't want them coming through. But I haven't been using powders as much lately just because it's the like set up and tear down, it's harder when I only have like two or three hours to film. Uh, and so I'm also trying to use up a bunch of these stocks that I already have. Um, what blue colors of dinner acid dyes do you like to use most? Frozen is my favorite. Um, and then I think sapphire blue is another one that I use a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's going to set, like, if they come running down the stairs, it will sound like a stampede. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll be in a, you know, I'm, I'm very thankful. I'm very thankful that, you know, I, and not even just right now, but just in general, that I can work at home. And so it gives us, like, a flexibility for, like, backup care when the kids are sick and all of that. But, uh, yeah. Or I think a dream would be to have studio space someday. Um, so that way like I could just have like a dyer's kitchen that's just dedicated for dyeing and I don't have to switch back and forth all the time. That would be a dream. But I'm you know, I think that, that would also be around the time that maybe I could like have I don't know, maybe like having an editor or something would come sooner. Uh, but I'm not, yeah, yet at a spot, yet at a spot where I could hire other people. Um, so, yeah. Uh, love you, family. Uh, it's like, wait, what's the the frozen quote? Hi, family. <laughs> I don't remember how it goes, uh, but that's sort of in my head. Sometimes there's a reference in my head, and I don't quite get it. Uh, we've been rewatching The Office. Which, oh man. Okay, so we're rewatching The Office, and there is it's so cringy, but it's like funny because, like, you know, it's supposed to be cringy, right? It's supposed to make you uncomfortable. But there's a point where, and I think at like Phyllis's wedding, and Dwight's like, he just said something that, like, given what's going on right now, he's basically like, we need a new plague. And we're just like, oh no, Dwight! No! It was horrible. It was horrible, but also like super old. Um, but other stuff has been funny. That one was less funny. That was the turn you're in. Uh, all right. Oh, I can make this smaller. Hashtag Kevin Dialogue. Uh, and I love. I just in general, if you're following any of my other tutorials, use just use the hashtag Chemnitz and I'll see it. Or you can tag me. Um, I try. In general, I try to respond to things on Instagram. I'm getting a lot more DMs, and so it's becoming a lot harder for me to keep up and reply. Um, so I'm doing my best, but there's sometimes things that get just lost, and so I'm really sorry about that. But um, I do like see most messages, even if I can't always reply. Um, but yeah, I think the best way to ask a question would be a, a public YouTube comment. Um, because I do try my best to reply to those. This week I couldn't really type for a few days, but uh, I can now. And so I plan to do that more like this afternoon. Um, so if you're a big fan of The Office, I highly recommend getting the DVDs because of the bonus content. The deleted scenes 
There's so many related scenes from each episode that it's almost a whole other episode on its own. And so right now we were just watching our done on Netflix and we were like, it feels like there's, like I remember these other things. I'm like, I think we're remembering the deleted scenes. Um, oh, Anonymous Amy, thank you for joining for your first live stream. Uh, the other, um, the other thing with The Office on the DVDs is the, normally I don't listen to commentary, but the actors on The Office are so funny because so much stuff is improv that um, the, the actors are so hilarious that the commentary is hilarious. They are just brilliantly funny people. Hey family. <laughs> Oh, realities, realities. Um, let's see. So in doing this, the places that I always like to keep an eye on are, yep. So inside, I think that for this one, it's just going to be this inside the tie area, which is not bad. Um, yeah, so doing two. Oh, there goes some red spread. Um, so that's the area where there's the most like white left. But so the other, I know you guys can't see both. This other colorway looks, has more pops of yellow. Um, but I don't think that that's about the like lines. I think that's just about the like diff, some differences. <laughs> Honey, it's okay. Oh man. Okay. There we go. Not a little bit more. All right. And then I'm going to let that sit and we'll call that. And in fact, we may do a little switcheroo again. Um, we will see. Uh, we might, I might switch back to the other pan if I can do that without, okay, good. The pans are not too hot. Sometimes they get really, really hot. Um, but I'm going to, oh good, that's not too hot. I can actually bring out the liquid. I never, I keep meaning to get a pair of like hot gloves for myself. And I mean, clearly I have not done that yet. This is so pretty. I think that the restraint and leaving some white behind is, oh, that area is, warmer and so then I'm going to remove less water. Um, I think leaving some pale patches is not something I do all the time. So this is not the prettiest view of the first yarns that we dyed, but it is a view. Um, <laughs> definitely, definitely not the prettiest. Okay. I'm going to, how can I switch this? Okay. Let's move you over to the sink. Move you here. Not too hot. Not too hot. You here. I have one more skein. Pre soak. Okay. And let's add this last skein. And that'll bring us to seven for today, which isn't bad. So I will say that looking at the ones that we dyed first and then the ones we dyed second, the colorways look really, really similar. Similar enough that I might include, end up including them all in one listing and call them like dye lap, batch one and batch two um, as an easy way for me to separate <laughs> them. All right. Um, let me see if there's any questions and then I'm going to go on in. Um, I haven't listened to the Office Ladies podcast. I was meaning to, um, but I just haven't. Um, so this is a, thinking of an office quote, it's like, this is strictly a run out the clock situation. Except it's not actually run out the clock. This is run out the die 
situation. I want to empty these squeeze bottles. So this last one, I have a feeling is going to be significantly more pigmented than the others. Well, maybe not. Um, I mean, I'm going to have like, there's going to be a tiny amount of yellow. Ooh, this color is actually really pretty. And I've used most of the dye. Um, I will be flipping and adding color to the other side. Um, and then I'll be adding things like, you know, I'm rinsing out the bottles and this is adding almost nothing. With the, the depth of the, um, the red, that drop, of turquoise is basically meaningless. Um, not completely meaningless, but basically a bit meaningless. Um, but it still feels good. I think that if I had these remnants um, and we're using them on their own, there's definitely enough that it could provide some varying undertones but that isn't necessarily what we're gonna actually see you know what I'm, i want to do i'm enjoying this like wash that we're getting one of the reason why there's a lot more color spread is that this water is not yet hot so that is one reason then the other reason is that there's more water volume present. And so because of that, that means that the colors can spread further before they strike. Um, but I'm going to turn up the heat. Yellow is a very interesting color when it comes to dye and probably paint and stuff too. But it gets overtaken by other colors so easily. And if you try to go super, super saturated with the yellow, it turns orange. So yeah, I think these little bits, I mean, technically this color is gonna be in there. So it's gonna still technically have all the colors the other colorways did. It's just, you know, less. <laughs> um, okay, you, I'm gonna turn off. You, I'm actually going to flip. So I turned off the other colorway and I am going to flip. And you can see why I wanted to flip. So this time there is a significant amount of pigment here, but it's different because we don't have those like streaky patches on it yet. Um, and I'm actually going a bit lighter because this is almost gone and we'll move it around so it, the color spread out but uh you notice that there was a bit more restraint but it's okay for colorways to be asymmetric um and even though i'm using these tie-dye bottles and funny so you can see here the pastel there's enough that it sort of layers on um, but you can use, like, I love these tulip squeeze bottles. Um, they are so handy. And honestly, the big reason why I use them a lot is that the tulip tie-dye refills do not, um, the tie-dye refills that come in packets aren't cheaper than ones that come with new bottles. So I just get the, the bottles. Okay, and we will be refilling this. And the gray to come and add that last pigment. And I'm even just I'm not even going to bother <laughs> spraying. Uh, I could come in, I've got like, I've got more of the red and the blue and the teal mixed, not at the concentrations in those jars I put the lids on. 
So it's not the concentrations that I used for the other colorways, but this actually, well, compared to the other things we dyed, this feels relatively neutral. Um, and almost all of the color is in the yarn. It's going to need to sit for a little bit. Nice. Um, whoops, turn that off. Cool, cool, cool. Um, oh, I guess I technically have a little bit more. From the spoons that I did before. Oh, Indy, you're fine. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's most... Indy, I know, sweetie. You want to go outside? Oh, shit! I'm very, very sorry for swearing, everyone. Um, surprisingly, I did not... I spilled dyed bottles everywhere, but I did not actually spill any dye anywhere. Um, oh, my goodness. I, huge apologies if you had any kids watching, I really try not to swear. Um, I had, I'll show you, I just tripped over this, which was on the floor, which was not a good place for me. Oh God, but all, there is no guy, no purple pop spill. Oh God, I'm about to start my house. Oh man. Um, You may go out. Mommy. Oi. I don't know if they're on where they are. Oh, goodness. I am so sorry, everyone. I'm okay. I'm not hurt. I'm not hurt. It, and there's no spill. Um. Um. Oh. <laughs> I was just terrified because, like, these bubbles would die just like everywhere. Um, it's human and real. Yeah. Um, oh, good. No, I just, I, so in my real life, I do swear a lot. I just try not to do that on camera. Um, but, oh, you guys are the best. <laughs> I was so scared. Because, like, purple. It was like black and purple pop, and like not the colors you want to to spill and explode. Um, but oh gosh! But once um, I the only other time I had a big spill is that when I first opened my Dharma Navy container, it um, when I first opened that container, it didn't explode, but it went everywhere. And so I was able to like clean a lot of it up, but and it didn't stain my floor. It was on like the work surface. I have, I mean, I'm wearing a mask. I didn't even get on the mask. Like everything was fine, but it was just like, uh, and that, that wasn't a live stream though. So, um, oh, you guys are all the best. Seriously. Um, yeah, no, the, oh my gosh. <laughs> it was just, you know, one of those those moments with regret. Um, but yeah, I mean, in general, it's funny because like I sometimes think like, you know, I, otherwise like I, I feel like I just like I bare my soul and stuff on camera. Um, but I just try to hold back the swearing, and I try to stay very positive, <laughs> which I try in my regular life as regular life my off-camera life, I try to stay really positive, but you know, there's, a, there's plenty of times I'm not very positive. <laughs> um, but, oh man. No, I just know, I know some people watch with like their little kids and stuff, and so um, I think this is my second, I could be wrong, but I think this is my second like full-on swear in a live stream. The other one was one where I spilled water next to my computer, maybe. And so, you know, another like, oh man, 
I mean, that's one thing that would be real bad is if I just screwed the laptop right now, because then that would put, that would, that would make things hard. But yeah, I mean, I'm it's funny because I thought, I was like, oh, you know, I'll do this. And I mean, you can see the difference between how quickly, and I, we could go back and look at the time, but the amount of time it took for me to die um, using the hearts you know, I think there were like multiple flips with like 10 minutes in between, so maybe about an hour. I think with the lines, like maybe it was closer to like half an hour. So it was faster, but it's only 200 grams of yarn. So there's some like trade off in there with time and intent. And um, when you're planning colorways, and especially if it's something that you need to do a lot of, it's worth considering the length of time that it'll take. Um, Oh gosh, I mean, and especially because that's the kind of thing where I, I, you know, like when I broke my foot, like I stepped my foot on a door frame. Um, and that's how that happened. Like I broke my foot like right here on the toe, like just like in the foot because like I went, yeah, it was just, it was a, like a fluke. It was an accident, but I felt like, I felt like, I felt stupid. So, um, yeah, now like I normally wear Crocs and stuff even inside because I'm like, I don't want to break my foot. I need protection. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, oh, man. The, oh, that is not anything of relevance for here. But I am starting to get hungry. Like part of me, I was like debating, maybe, maybe I'll have to try. Uh, maybe I'll need to try to do a leg no dye behind live stream at some point to try to use up these leftover dyes. If I'm doing that with intent, then it becomes so much easier for me to go through um, yarn and do some fast colorways, but actually some of them end up being some of my favorites. I love dyeing my feel and I have some ideas of what I want to do, but I have so many bottles that are, you know, they don't even have like a half cup flat. And so in the, I just finished exporting this month's Dye Pop PS episode, which will be available for patrons, I hope by Monday is my goal. Um, Cause I just have to write up the, the Patreon newsletter. And so that means that last month's Dye Pop PS will be publicly available for everyone. Um, but in that, like I was able to use up a bunch of colors I'd already mixed, so. Um, so if you don't want to use the Kool-Aid, um, so there's a question about the knit crate yarn. Um, if you use food coloring, do I need to use vinegar as the acid? And yes. Um, you could use citric acid as well, but you do need, I mean, you need something acidic in there for the food coloring to bind to the yarn. Um, you could even, I mean, you could even use the Kool-Aid as your citric acid source, but you said you didn't want to use the Kool-Aid. So, um, yeah, there is that. And it looks like, it looks like a tiny human. Hello? Um, What's wrong? Just nothing. He came in. Oh, just that you came in? Okay. What time are you wearing yarn? Probably in a little bit, honey. Do you want to come say hi real quick? Oh, with me. Hi. hi. It's Lucas from Kenwitz again. <laughs> oh, what from Kenwitz? <laughs> he rarely ever comes on. <laughs> Well, yes, let's begin it. Bye, Bye, Mommy. Bye, I'm going. Love you very much. Hi, um, Mommy. Yeah, I mean, I started you up in my family. Um, um, I'm coming up. I'm going to the camera and get you. One minute. Oh, one minute? Yeah, I, mean, I think I'll be, I'm going to try to wrap up by noon. So I'm just we're in some more questions and stuff. So, um, and I would have to find a freeze frame of the kids like popping in because that was just they're my whole heart. Um, I mean, I'm not sure that's something that most mothers would say, but uh, <laughs> they, yeah, they are uh, used, and it's you know it's hard because I'm now working. So normally I don't like wouldn't work on weekends, but now. 
Um, I could do like what? Like I think I typically do like Wednesday mornings now. Depends around the kids' Zoom schedules. Uh, uh, but I'll do Wednesday mornings, and then I do Saturday and Sunday mornings. It's like my dedicated filming time. Um, so it's just it's everything is a lot harder, and I don't know. You know, one of we had to. Uh, I don't know how else to end up. Uh, we one of Lucas's camps has been canceled, um, and we're waiting to hear on riders and who knows. Like, there's just so much unknown. Um, so, if you guys are curious, we're in Massachusetts, and so things are still very restricted for right now. And I'm not, I'm not giving. Let me put it this way. I'm not putting commentary. Andy, what, what are you doing? I'm not, I'm not adding um, my commentary to it and my opinions on this right now. It's just the, the reality of the situation. Um, and so our goal is just to be respectful and to try to keep people safe. But, all right, I'm going to call that. And this has been off. I can look this. But so this is one of our graffiti colorways. And this looks super similar to that one to me, just having it moved around. But we'll take a closer look as, ow, bad finger, as things dry. But so we've dyed, oh, can I not do math? Oh no, that's four, not five. Okay, so we've done seven skeins in four different colorways today, which honestly isn't so bad. So I am going to start wrapping things up. Oh. So that way I can clean up, because uh, actually I am hungry as well. Uh, but if you guys have any other questions, I would love to try to answer. And yeah, but yeah, my kids are probably adorable. And um, if, oh, so like speaking of other things, like I, one of the things I shared on Instagram, yesterday i shared it yesterday was with with the boys uh was the picture of them wearing their um masks that i saw them at one point i talked about doing a mask sewing live stream uh because i started making them for friends and family but the issue is that i don't i can't really talk well while i'm sewing uh and so it requires a bit more like i can watch things and i can listen but i'm i don't think it would be a very entertaining stream because i'd have trouble like when I'm dying, I'm used to like giving running commentary and I can't do that as well as if I'm sewing. Um, and so, yeah, but I, I did share like the pattern that I use and some tips for getting kids to wear masks. Um, one thing that we did that really helped was having them try them on for a picture. Um, and so then like after doing that, like on a couple different occasions, then like they started and well, seeing me wear them, they started getting used to it. So I just shared some tips of what worked for my boys. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think I think Massachusetts is be is going to be more restricted for longer than I don't know I, about Vermont, but I know like New Hampshire and Connecticut and Rhode Island are, might, are all opening things a little bit sooner than us. But um, yeah, we'll we'll see. I mean, I'm whew, it's just hard. I haven't seen my like all the kids grandparents all live so close to us and we haven't seen them in ages and so it's, that's just hard um but yeah i mean i've been like and i haven't got normally when i ship stuff normally i go to i would or in in february i would go to the post office because i like to get packages scanned in so i have that receipt for proof of me giving it to them for the system i ensure all the packages that i send um but uh, yeah, so I just do that for like the added step. But I've been just going to the the drop offs in the neighborhood. Um, although I suppose I have never tried scheduling a pickup by the USPS, but that makes me more nervous than putting it in the like closed and locked box. So uh, this was your first knit box. You were nervous at first, but after watching a ton of your videos, you're really excited to get started. Yay, oh, I'm so glad you love how your yarn, yarn turned out. It really is. So I talked about like one of my uh, one of my goals earlier on about like going with the flow. I talked about that earlier in the stream. But one of my big 
biggest goals with this whole channel is to make yarn dyeing feel approachable and accessible and to share my journey of discovery and playing with different techniques and so it's like learning along together in a very collaborative sort of way and that's also like the mission behind like my Facebook group and which is all fiber art content is welcome in there but again my goal in there is like okay if you're going to share yarn you need to be willing to talk about how you put it together because this is a collaboration for everyone to ask questions and um, what's great with that community is that it's growing in such a way that people can answer questions frequently before I even can get to it and so it's just awesome um, but yeah, so my goal is to make it like <laughs> accessible and approachable. Oh, am I accessible and approachable to you right now, Yvonne? As you like come up and say hi, all my boys. And you look, and you look, 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 look at me. Look. No, okay, fine. Um, <laughs> yeah, so my goal is just to make it as accessible and approachable as I can. And food coloring, I think, is a great way to get started and see if you like the process before. <laughs> Uh, investing in dedicated dye equipment and you know with the dye pot weekly series that's when you know I went in and I was like okay I'm gonna like get the equipment I'm gonna get the dyes and we're gonna start exploring and seeing how this goes and so that was my goal um, so thank you I have a lot of fun with this um, yeah it does all oh, right the dog his name we named the dog Indiana Oh, man, I feel like, I mean, I'm not sure how I even feel about George Lucas, but I feel like he's had a lot of influence over our lives. Um, enough that when I, when Keith and I were naming our eldest, his name is Lucas, I was like, oh, you know, I think at first I suggested like Logan, um, because I don't know why we were, we got really into L names. Um, and then I was like, Lucas, and he was like, yes. And it didn't occur to me until later why the yes was so fast. And at that point, we already had Indy because, like, if you are familiar with An Indiana Jones, um, his name is actually like Henry, um, but you know he the, and they they had a dog named Indiana, and so he like took the dog's name because he liked that better than being called Junior. Because yeah. Um, uh, no, Indy is an American Eskimo, so it's like a, the same family, um, same Spitz family as Samoyeds and Huskies and Pomeranians, but um, there are mid-sized, so he's like 23 pounds, but a lot of fur, a lot of fur. Um, he's technically, he would, his parents are both miniature American Eskimos, but he's probably a standard, he's taller than I think his parents were, so. Yeah, they're sort of like circus dogs, but he's beautiful. I love him. He's very territorial and very protective and very unaccepting of new people. And so it makes life challenging. Um, yep, yep. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's, but yeah, so that was something that I was like, well, that's what we're going to name a dog. Name a dog. And I feel like. I don't know, I don't want to name another dog like R2D2 or something. I just need to call it R2. Um, your son is saying after Harrison Ford. Oh, awesome. <laughs> oh, man. Actually, the. Uh, um, actually, so my eldest Hebrew middle name is named at, for is um, Herschel uh, for my great grandfather Harrison. So in a roundabout way. <laughs> okay, so if you were to kettle dip or low um, low submersion dye, cool and squeeze out the water, and sprinkle dry dye powder, would the yarn still wet have enough acid for the dye particles to strike? Very likely, yes. Um, a lot of times, if I do a pre soak with acid, it's a very similar concentration to what I would use to do. Um, color low immersion. So yes, definitely. Um, uh, yeah, but actually, like as much as I love Indy, I probably would not get the same breed again just because of the the hardest thing is like if we clearly accept a person, 
he has a long memory. So people he met as a puppy, he loves and needs no reintroduction. You know, they are his family, they are his pack for life, even if he goes two years without seeing them. But it takes hours to get him to accept a new person we bring into our home. And so that's just, it's hard to have guests. Um, and it's hard for him to see the vet. Like he just, especially, maybe even more around me than Keith, he like really like is protective of me. The one thing is like, he's pretty good around kids, but we don't introduce him to other kids because we don't want him to scare anyone if he starts biting, barking. So yeah, it's, it's frustrating. But all right, I think I am going to sign off because as much as I want to hang out and talk, I know I have a lot of cleaning to do to get ready for lunch. Um, because one thing that if you are using commercial size in your kitchen, you do want to make sure that you clean up the work surface and really transition um, it back into like a human kitchen. But um, we won't be using the stove for anything for lunch, so that's good. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. Like you guys make doing this so much fun. I love it. Uh, again, you know, subscribe, uh, submit your photos within the next month. Even if I've already released the recap, you can still submit um, photos. Not that I would be able to include them, but I love to see it. Just please let me know what month dialogue it is if you're doing an older one. There is a playlist, which I hope it's linked in the video description. But if you just go to the channel page, you can see a playlist of all the past Chemist Dialog live streams and recaps. So you can see all the past inspiration photos that I've picked, and you are always more than welcome to die yarn inspired by anything I create. Um, I so in general, it is not um, you know it's not acceptable to copy other dyers colorways unless they are inviting you to. And so I am inviting you to use my recipes and to create my colorways. Um, so yeah, that is just um, yeah I figured that it is put up there, but not all other dyers welcome that. So uh, let them invite you to before, before doing that. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. And I like that YouTube is, seems to be like holding the word die. Um, <laughs> like, or something. Um, but yay, die yarn, share pictures with me. And yeah, I hope that you guys are all going to have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Um, and here's my solo distance hug, clingy to all of you, and yeah, I will chat with you soon. Hopefully my knit crates arrive soon so I can unbox those. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited and yeah, I haven't thought about what the rest of my work day is going to look like today, but I'm excited to play with some more color and to go and finish up this yarn. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will chat with you all soon. Bye. Oh, nope. And then I always hang out and wait um, uh, for my head to disappear so that way I can end the stream so that way I can end the stream. But oh, actually, I could test.